Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Rhett Nelson. I work with OSPI on um, graduation of team effort in dropout prevention, intervention, and re-engagement efforts in Washington State. Um, a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're focusing on um, our attendance um, interventions, particularly those um, provided by a partner agency. After a brief introduction, um, we're, our partner agency, um, Treehouse, is going to talk about um, how they're using the Check and Connect model um, to about student engagement and focus on, um, with their focus on school completion, particularly for youth in foster care. A little bit about um, what brought us to thinking about absenteeism and attendance. Uh, we've, we've been working as a state in graduation and team effort um, looking at how different agencies and organizations can help um, schools and students succeed. Um, and the Building Bridges group, um, legislative mandated group, created this set of recommendations. Um, and the first two are particularly key to our attendance initiative, which is set an educational goal for youth and family serving agencies and coordinate efforts to achieve it. Um, we're, so we're looking at how, how can our, our agency partners like Department of Health, Department of Social and Health Services, how can they use attendance, how can they gain access to that data and use that to help, help outcomes, help improve outcomes for kids, especially those in multiple systems. Um, and then we're looking at building dropout prevention intervention systems and practices at every grade level. So how can we improve attendance K through 12? Because um, we're going to see greater outcomes from kids that are in school. Uh, the, this piggybacks with a federal initiative that's just gone live um, called Every Student Every Day, where um, Department of Education, Department of Justice, um, Housing and Urban Development, and a few other agencies are all working together at a, at a national level on addressing and eliminating chronic absenteeism. So we're very excited that, that we're, we're in sync with our national efforts. I would like to uh, introduce Angela Griffin. Yes, Angela, uh, you're the Associate Director of Education Program Services at Treehouse. Um, go ahead and, and let, us, let us hear about Check and Connect and how you're using it to engage students and increase graduation. Perfect. So I, what I'm going to give you this morning is an overview of the Check and Connect model, um, the general model, and you'll see that the model is structured to um, support youth who are potentially at risk of disengaging from school or dropping out from school. And it looks at the attendance, the behavior, and the course performance of students um, using a, a a structure of measurement that I will go through and then I'll share with you a little bit how Treehouse is using this model particularly for youth in foster care. And so Check and Connect is it's a structured mentoring intervention so um, depending on who is implementing Check and Connect the students will receive a mentor who works directly with those with them um, to help ensure that they stay engaged in school. So for Treehouse, we have a, what's called education specialists who work in all of the middle and high schools in King County um, focused on youth and foster care. There are some school districts who use Check and Connect working with ELL populations. Um, in Spokane, they use Check and Connect working with um, students who have been in the juvenile justice system. So there's a wide range of populations that Check and Connect is used for, but each, each one has some very structured, consistent practices um, that are monitored using fidelity. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. The, the main um, crux of the structure is that it's rela about relationship building and then also using data to help understand where kids are at risk of dropping out of school and then um, using interventions to help keep them in school. The, the main focus of Check and Connect is school completion rather than dropout prevention. And so school completion meaning that we want to see kids graduating from high school and that they have the academic and social competence when they do graduate. And so it's not just about keeping kids in school, 
but um, it's also making sure that they graduate and that they they are able to move on to a productive future. Um, in most cases, we want to make sure that kids are college ready or at least prepared for post-secondary options. The Check and Connect model was structured to supplement other interventions that school districts may be using. Um, one of the most popular um, interventions, more of a universal type of um, intervention is PBIS, um, or Positive Behavior Intervention Supports, and so it's not intended to be a standalone evidence-based model. It is really intended to um, focus on the students who are at the tier um, two or tier three level of intervention needs. And uh, research actually shows that about 80% of students in schools are already connected to a caring adult in school. So if there's about 20% of the kids who need a more formal connection, and that's where checking that comes in, having the, the mentor strategy of someone who is helping to monitor um, students with their attendance and then also providing the intervention if students are flagging risk in that area. Um, the core beliefs of Check and Connect is that disengagement is really a process and so kids don't just automatically or all of a sudden disengage. There's something that's happening over time that leads to that disengagement. And so the model has been structured to track, track students' attendance over time and to um, be able to look at that data and understand what may be contributing to their attendance. Particularly for the students that we work with in Treehouse, um, are the students are middle school and high school students. And so um, high school students have multiple periods of classes throughout the day, and so we may notice that attendance is, is um, better in the middle of the day, or at the end of the day than it is in the morning, and so maybe the kid needs an alarm clock to get up in the morning, or, or maybe they're not showing up after lunch, or, you know, or it's a particular class that they're not attending. So we're really looking at patterns that happen over time and other factors that may be contributing to students disengaging. For youth in foster care, um, they experience quite a bit of mobility and, and um, reasons why they may disengage based on just being part of a, a foster care system. And so at Treehouse, we, we pay very, very close attention to our students um, attending and showing up and participating in school and, and have staff who can actually help make sure that kids are reengaging if they fully disconnect. Check and Connect is focusing on alterable variables, and so there are variables that we cannot do anything um, to fix, so like their age, student's age, um, disability, socioeconomic status, but the alterable barriers, variables are indicators of disengagement where someone can step in and provide an intervention um, that could change the course of a student's trajectory in that area. So with attendance, um, it is an alterable variable, and if we are aware that students aren't showing up to school or they're tardy or they're leaving school early, then we can um, provide an intervention that may help them get back on track with attendance and um, continue to participate, get the resources that they need that may eliminate any barriers to attendance. And just you know, part, a big part of Check and Connect is the relationship, and so knowing that there's someone there at school or someone in a student's life who is holding them accountable makes a huge difference in their um, willingness to show up. The Check and Connect model has um, a continuum of attend, engage, and invest. And so today the, the focus that we have is around attend. And this is making sure that students are attending school regularly and again that they're successfully completing high school. And um, with this attention to the, the making sure kids are showing up, along this continuum we, we know that engaging, meaning that they are 
um, participating in school, that they're, they're not having um, issues with behavior or discipline, and then also that they are setting some goals toward their future. This continuum actually has been proven to have a, a huge effect on students participating, staying in school, um, not dropping out, and, and having better attendance. Um, some of the strategies that we'll, I'll talk about a little bit more when we look at the attend section is that we're, we're wanting to make sure that um, students also have the resources that they need. And, and um, so I said earlier, like they may need an alarm clock to wake up. They may need help with scheduling their time, scheduling their day. Um, the parent engagement piece is a huge part of this work as well and so if you have a parent who is not able to help get a kid to school or get them to their bus stop or or um, hold them accountable then our, our mentors our staff will actually help with parents and get them um, paying attention to their students attendance and, and making sure that they they are participating in school we are the, we use the early warning indicator signs that most school districts, um, most educational systems are using um, for Check and Connect. The attendance that we look at is absent 10% or more of school days. That typically breaks down to um, three or more absences in a month or 25 absences within a school year. And so that's how we're, we're monitoring that a student ha is at risk of disengaging or dropping out um, using metrics around attendance. The program uses a, a systematic monitoring process. And so it's, it's dependent on the structure of the program, how often a staff person is checking on a student's attendance. And so for Treehouse, with our youth in foster care, because it's a highly mobile population um, dealing with high levels of trauma and being in crisis, we actually check students' attendance every single day. And so for a student who is on a staff person's caseload, they are checking every day using the, the um, data portals that schools have, ask, checking in with students, checking in with caregivers, social workers, school personnel, but finding a way to know if the student is showing up on a daily basis. And if they do not show up, then providing a very quick intervention for those students. Um, we begin flagging a student at risk as soon as they have three or more absences. And that risk factor then elevates the level of intervention that we will provide. The typical check and connect model uses a, a, a weekly check. And so every week they're checking to see what the attendance has been over the course of that week and then providing an intervention. And then there's also models where they may be checking once a month um, and seeing how many absences they've had over the course of the month and providing interventions. But we believe that the sooner you're able to identify a student that's at risk with their attendance and, and the sooner you're able to provide an intervention, then the, the, greater, um, the, the less likely they are to disengage. We are typically checking data, as I said, we use online systems, we collect student records, we're checking in with personnel. At Treehouse, we actually check online, we check student records, um, but then at the end of each semester, we collect attendance records from the school district or school building to verify the attendance that we've been collecting over the course of the year for our data collection and to, to better understand how kids are doing at the aggregate level. Um, but for the intervention purposes, it's really that online check. Um, again, it's at least weekly, and then more often if a student is, has an increased um, risk of being disengaged. And it's personalized. Um, the mentors are, when they're checking, they're looking for patterns. They're looking to see if there's particular classes that they're missing. They're looking to see if they're um, showing up 
at different times of the day differently with their attendance. Um, they're also looking to see if there is a um, something that's happening at home that may be contributing to their not showing up at school and then again pro providing interventions. They, they talk to the students, find out what's going on with them personally, um, what their perspective is around school, why they wouldn't want to attend. And you know, for our youth in foster care that we work with, again, most of, a lot of them are in crisis. And so um, and the older kids that we work with, we find kids that will be living from um, home to home. Um, they may not have a stable living environment. They may not have stable transportation to get to school. So we're trying to provide um, re barrier removal resources to help them be able to stay engaged and participate in school. We're also aware of family influences and circumstances, and so any opportunity that we have to um, engage families, call parent, we call parents up if a student doesn't show up to school, um, you know, and, and just help them monitor their students' attendance as well. As, and also with the, the younger kids, helping parents understand the importance of showing up to school um, and, and helping them see the value. And so we have those conversations with parents. And then using school and community resources to help our students stay engaged. Um, Angela? Yes. What, what kind of, uh, you mentioned burial removal. How do you, is there, uh, how do you guys identify the barrier, student barriers and how, who do you work with to, to look at removal of those barriers? So we, for us, we have a lot of re resources at Treehouse that we're able to use. So, for example, if kids need alarm clocks, if they need planners to organize their time, that we'll provide those. Um, if they need a a, um, a mentor or a, a personal connection to call them up and check in on a daily basis, then we'll make those connections for them as well, someone to hold them accountable. Um, because we're working with older kids, we actually help our kids identify people in their lives that can hold them accountable. So they may have a classmate. Um, a student at school that they've, they've established a relationship with that will help them become partners at making sure that they show up to school and check in with each other. Um, so it's, it's really just connecting them to providing whatever resource is going to make sense for that student to get to class. Thanks. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, and that, those are our interventions, and so our, our interventions that um, we provide, we're, we're actually sharing the data with students. That's one of the, the first most deliberate intervention that you can provide when a student is able to see how many days there are in a school year and in a month and how many days they've actually missed and what the impact is on them missing those school days, then um, it provides an opportunity to have a, a, a really great conversation with the student where then they can take some ownership in um, their, their behavior and then set up a, a plan of action to do something different. Um, so helping them problem solve, helping them organize, helping them actually have goals. Another resource that we provide at Treehouse are incentives. And so we, we had a student at a middle school over in West Seattle who um, was missing at least three days a week of school. And when we checked in and said, you know, hey, what's going on, he was able to share. He just had a hard time getting up in the morning. And so we offered him an incentive. What what would motivate him? What What would he like to have? Um, to when he shows up at school and and um, he asked for there's these chips called Takis it was that simple um, he you know if he showed up he'd have a, a bag of Takis ready for him um, at the end by the, if he was there every day for a week then the end of the week he would get a big bag of Takis and it was a cool thing for him you know he was able to show it off to his friends and share with his friends and so forth but he was showing up for school, and that was last school year, at the beginning of last school year, um, going into this school year. He hasn't missed any school. He's been there. 
Um, and he's had some other incentives. He's built off of that and motivation. But it, it was that simple for him. Um, it's not as simple for every kid. Uh, there, there are barriers where you know kids are experiencing depression. We have, we have that, and so you know, trying to make sure they get mental health services if if they need it. But um, whatever support that they they need to stay in school, um, based on that risk factor, then we make sure it's provided. Um, this is where we're actually working with the school around an intervention. And so um, <clears throat> the, the student may be disengaging because the, the classwork is too hard, or they are identifying the classwork as being too hard. Um, they're, they're struggling with completing their assignments. Um, and then also maybe they have a low grade and they lose motivation. So we actually help them identify ways that they can you know, work harder in class better understand the, the coursework, complete, make up assignments that they may be missing, um, and then also improve their grades. And that's working in collaboration with the classroom teachers. Um, most of our mentors, our education specialists, actually work in one or more school building. And so they're there. They're, they become part of that school environment. And so they get to know their students' teachers and their counselors and the deans. And, and they'll be called on if, if something is, um, is going awry with their, the students' attendance um, or their behavior or even completing their courses. And so they, they are there and available and, and um, providing very direct support for each student over time. And the students also are aware that they're there. So, <clears throat> excuse me, as part of that relationship um, that they have going on, they know that the mentor is checking in on them, holding them accountable, um, and participating in their school environment. Um, this, again, we are continuing to help the, helping students deal with everyday demands. So besides the schoolwork, also, you know, how are they connected in the school building? What kind of relationships have they established in the school environment? Um, we have found that the work that we do at Treehouse, um, we've looked at research around student engagement um, and being and participating in in school building activities, so clubs and and sports and and um, arts, and so just having this well-rounded perspective has really helped our kids stay focused and stay engaged and show up. Um, if they're participating in a sport and, you know, we can talk to the coach and the coach says, you know, if you don't show up for school, you don't get to practice, then, you know, that, that becomes a motivator for some kids. Um, if they're participating in a, a robotics club and, and that robotics coach is able to say, hey, you got, I'm checking your attendance and if you're not showing up for school, then... Um, you won't be able to participate in robotics. I know how much you like this. And, and so finding ways that are um, also making the school day meaningful for them um, in, in an enhancement to the, the learning, and learning environment and classroom environment. So the last couple of things I'll share with you is a little bit of the research that um, Check and Connect has done and found, and then um, a little bit about our the data that we've collected at Treehouse. Um, so the research, Check and Connect, the was developed out of the University of Minnesota, and they have been doing um, two randomized control trials and then four replications of those trials, and then based on the data that they've collected from those trials and the the um, both quantitative and qualitative, um, they've been able to show some real strong results um, using Check and Connect as a model to keeping students engaged in school. And Check and Connect is being used all over the United States in quite a bit of different varieties. Um, I attended a conference two weeks ago, and there are school districts that are, are using Check and Connect, tribal communities. Um, it's being used in Alaska and Canada, and um, it's work being used with students with disabilities, um, ELL populations, ethnic populations, um, just a, a wide, from el and it's from elementary all the way through high school. There are even some um, colleges that are looking at Check and Connect as a model of accountability 
for students as, as well at, at, at that level. And so what they found is that it, it increases students' credit accrual, increases their persistence in school, increases the graduation rate, and then also there is a perceived increase in parent participation. They, you know, collect some, they've collected surveys from parents, um, but they haven't been able to completely quantify Particularly around the attendance piece, um, there there was one of the studies they looked they worked with 94 students in special education over two years in the middle school, um, and by the end of ninth grade, the group that received the Check and Connect interventions, 91% um, versus 70%. So 91% was the treatment group, um, and 70 percent was the control group um, that had persistence in school with no periods of 15 day absences. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I think I'm reading this wrong. Um, there were 90 percent, 91 percent of students who were in the first, the treatment group and 70 percent in the control group. 85 percent of the treatment group had no more than 15 day absences. And then 68 um, percent were on track within five years for graduation. And then there was another study that they did for elementary school students um, who were absent or tardy to school 12% or more of the time. They received the Check and Connect interventions over two years and about 40% of um, the students were engaged in regularly attending school um, after, during, after that period of time. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, it went, it went away for a little bit. Um, and so then for Treehouse, we've been um, doing using Check and Connect as a model for the past three years. We're going into our fourth year. And so um, in our first year, we, um, using the measure of fewer than 20 absences a year, um, for our first year, we saw 61% of our students were on target with attendance 53% um, the second year and 52% the third year. Now the reason for the decline in number and how we still celebrate these numbers is that we do deal with a highly mobile population so we're not looking at the same students year over year. Um, so any students who participated in our program that year then that's what that metric is for. And then also over the past three years, we've been able to collect more attendance behavior, um, attendance data. So our first year of all of our students, we were only able to collect about 20% of attendance records of all the students that we had served that first year. Um, it was uh, approximately 500 students. Um, our second year, we served approximately 600 students, and we were able to collect um, about 40% of attendance data. This last year, um, we served 70, almost 700 students, and we were able to collect almost 80% of our student records. So, um, a student's record. So, there's a big difference in the number of records we've been able to collect, which attributes to us having more accurate data. Um, um, on that, what what were the barriers to getting the data before, and and what what's been done differently to get get that attendance data? Um, well, our, our first year we were at sending staff to school buildings and asking them to collect the attendance records from um, the front desk staff, school, you know, staff personnel. Um, we ran into a glitch our first year where we didn't get there soon enough, so some school buildings, so at the end of the year, some school, school buildings had shut down by the time we went to go ask for the data, um, and then we tried to go back and collect it. Um, when school started back up and it just didn't work out for us. Um, so then we also have established over the, over the past three years, we've established MOUs with school districts where in some school districts they will actually just hand, they will just give us, um, we give them a list of students and they give us the data. Not all school districts do that, um, so it's not consistent. And then this year 
we used um, not only going and asking for the data from school buildings, asking for the data from school districts, but then also we got access to some of the online, some districts gave us access, access to their online portal, portals to be able just to pull it directly. Um, so we've had, we have a variety of how we're collecting it this year to be able, a variety of ways and be able to collect more. Thank you. Thank you. So questions. Some, some, one question that came up was, um, you know, you are a community agency. Um, you've got resources for um, a lot of your, your stuff that you can provide. Um, do you have any tips for schools with limited resources, funding, personnel, um, that might be able to utilize this type of interventions? Yes, yeah, so, so what school districts school districts are doing, they're implementing this as a model, they are actually saying, having a pool of money um, to use to staff the, the Tech model and then also have some resources available to um, help to support kids. And that's, you know, it's, it is an investment and school districts um, have to determine if they're willing to make that investment um, for, for students. But yes, we do have the benefit of be a nonprofit organization and um, be able to receive donations. It's, you know, it's also an opportunity to collaborate with community organizations such as Treehouse or other um, communities and schools. And in, in, in federal way, communities and schools is one is an organization, um, community-based organization that's using this model um, within their schools for for kids at risk. And so, you know, finding <laughs> collaborating with community-based organizations can be helpful. I think that's a, a great point there. Um, you know, knowing that schools don't have all the all the resources and are limited in, in what what their funds can be spent on. You know, reaching out and making developing those community partners is, I think, really helpful for a lot of districts out there. Um, it's not necessarily um, as easy, especially when you get into really rural districts. I understand, yes. but um, you know, any any of those partnerships that you can develop. Uh, is certainly helpful. I had a district talk to me the other day and they said something that's really worked for them well was, um, you know, when, when they have people reaching out to them like seeking, you know, they, they've got their normal response of, you know, this is how well we're doing and giving a snap, snapshot of, of the successes of the district and instead including in that like a targeted, like knowing who's, who, your, who, your custom, who your audience is and, and being able to, you know, sort of have in mind what resources they could provide um, and assist the school with um, has been really successful in their, in their development, of, development of their partnerships. Yes, and we, we actually, part of our collaboration with schools is that um, in the middle schools and high schools that we work in, about 80% of them have identified someone in the school building to be a uh, in school mentor, so maybe a school counselor, special education teacher, um, even in some schools a dean or a resource teacher, but someone in the building that a student can check in with each day and um, hold them accountable, provide them resources if need be. So there's always somebody in the building that can provide that support. That's a great point. Um, I got a couple questions here from the audience. Um, is Check and Connect only implemented in the high schools or can it be implemented in middle schools or elementary schools? It can be implemented elementary all the way through 12th grade. Yeah. Good. I, th I think that probably just some of those who you're targeting with those interventions might be a little different on there, knowing the, knowing the family influence, especially when you get, get in the elementary levels. Yeah, the elementary level is where there's more family engagement, um, more communication, so there's more partnership, a greater partnership with the parents or caregivers and helping to, to track students' attendance and helping to make sure they're showing up. Um, start losing some of those connections in middle school and high school. And so that's where we're working. 
but for actually through for elementary through high school, um, the goal setting is a, a big piece of that work, and it, and it can be done with any student. And so it's actually sitting down with them, and if we have a student who's missed a significant amount of school days, helping them set a goal um, to reduce that number. And you can do that as you know early. I've, I've um, heard about elementary school students where um, they they show up late to school every day. And it's because a, a parent is not getting them there on time, and so um, they'll set a goal to, you know, first have, do some learn some self advocacy techniques, how to have that conversation with the caregiver or parent, and and you know get some support in helping them get to school on time. But then also setting a personal goal that they can get their parent to buy in with them on to, you know, reduce those number of days that they're they're tardy or late. That's great. Um, that that brings up an, another question for me, which was oh, I've lost it. Um, <laughs> oh, it is uh, the, um, one of these. Uh, Jerry Bender is asking how many schools is Treehouse serving, and how many FTE does Treehouse provide? We have twenty-seven education specialists, and we work in six school districts in King County, um, 145 middle and high schools in King County that we're working with. What, what's sort of the manageable caseload for each each caseworker or uh, or mentor? I'm, I miss I couldn't hear you. Uh, what's the do you guys have a manageable uh, caseload that you guys assign for each each mentor or caseworker? Yes, yeah, so so the, the for the check and connect model, um, the caseload is forty to fifty students. For our model, because we're working with youth in foster care, um, we do twenty to twenty five students. So we pretty much cut that in half um, because they're they're at greater risk and, and need more intensive services. And the mentors, um, the mentors have a variety of backgrounds. So we 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 typically hire staff who um, have at least a bachelor's degree um, because we're working with youth in foster care. We we always look for staff who have some knowledge of the social social service social work um, system. Um, sorry, social welfare <laughs> system and um, counseling, mental health. Um, those are some variables that we're looking for in the staff that we hire. Of course, education, the knowledge of the education system, um, but many programs around the um, the, Uni the United States who are implementing this program have school personnel who are the actual Check and Connect mentors. That's a great point. I believe uh, the OSPI website on Check and Connect is live now. I'll send that email, I mean that web address out um, with, with the other materials I send out after this. Um, and uh, your partnership is that, do you, are you direct partners with the school districts or um, are, is it DSHS that works with you? Who, who got you guys off and running with this work? So our very first partnership is with um, Children's Administration because they refer all of their youth to they refer the youth to us, and then our um, next partnership is with actually we have a partnership with OSPI in the roadmap area district. So in in South King County, seven districts in South King County, we have a partnership there, um, and then we work in very close partnership with the 16 school districts that we serve kids in, in King County. Um, and we are, um, we have MOUs with all of those school districts and so the memorandum of understanding around our service to the students in the schools as well as data collection um, and then um, providing specific resources. And then we also partner with mental health um, agencies to help our kids get their mental health services, um, independent living for our older kids to help them with their transition out of foster care, 
Um, we, part we partner with a variety of uh, mentoring organizations to help students get um, mentoring and coaching and support. Um, we engage volunteers, a lot of volunteers to tutor kids. One of, one of um, the areas that we um, try to make sure kids are get a resource is around credit retrieval. So um, many kids will just stop showing showing up to school because they don't believe that they're going to graduate and they, because they don't have enough credits to graduate. So we um, try to make sure that they are have access to regaining credits that they may have missed or may have lost. Um, and so, yeah, there's quite a bit of partnerships that that we work with. Um, our, we are the majority of our funding for Treehouse comes from private donors, so we we have very limited funding from the state or from from grants. And so, we we have um, a community who has chosen to invest in increasing the graduation rates for youth in foster care. And we we set a goal that by 2017, the rate for youth in foster care um, of graduation would increase to um, similar to the rate of their peers, and I believe that's about 70% in the state of Washington, 70% of students that are graduating from high school. Typically, um, youth in foster care are graduating anywhere between 35 to 50% of students, and so we're working really hard to increase that graduation rate. Um, this past year in King County, um, all of the youth in foster care that graduated, their graduation rate was 58% this past um, school year, so we are working to increase. Um, do you know of any particular high schools um, in the Seattle area that utilize Check and Connect? Not, I don't know of any high schools that use it directly. Um, with the with partner with a partnership with OSPI, we've been training school districts on using Check and Connect, and so uh, we have directly trained the Kent School District, and I know that there's some other school districts that are on the, the, the list to be trained, um, Shoreline and um, I believe Federal Way and Highline, but I'm not sure if any Seattle schools are using the model directly. I know Federal Way was using the model with their ELL population, um, and then Spokane is using it with their, um, they've used it with high school students and they're still using it with middle school students in collaboration with the Department of Justice, um, the courts and juvenile, ju juvenile programs over in Spokane. And then there was, there was a report, there's a recent report around s several other um, school districts that have shown great results with using Check and Connect, but I can't remember all of that. I, I remember Yakima, but I don't remember the other school districts. We can find out. Okay, and, and that, some of that might be on our Check and Connect website, like uh, maybe the training opportunities. Um, I'll have to look at that more in depth. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it's actually, the, the, you know, Check and Connect is a model, and of course, you know, we want the, if you want to use the full model if possible, um, but the concept of checking on students' attendance and being aware of when they're showing up or not showing up and then providing them with an intervention is just, you know, it's really a, a more simplified concept that, you know, any school building um, school personnel, school district could be implementing ch Check and Connect is more of the systematic model that gives you the, the, the full practice and, and um, you know, but if, if you start somewhere, start with just being aware and, and then providing some, um, some interventions for students so that they're not disengaging. Thank you. That's a, that's a great point. You know, it's not, you know, Tech and Connect is a, is a great model, a great framework that's out there that's evidence-based and a, correct, a good implementation of it is going to be effective, but the elements of it are pretty universal yes. in, those, in those supports. Yes. Um, I got a person mentioning that they have a peer mentoring program in their high school, and they're wondering if Treehouse um, works with any peer mentoring programs or uses peer students as mentors? 
We we have talked about doing that. We're we're not ready to um, use that model because of the vulnerability of the students that we work with. Um, so so we're yeah we're not we're not doing that yet. We are looking at having a model using the alumni of care, and so we are actually working on expanding our program outside of King County and um, developing a structure where alumni. Um, one possibility is where we can have alumni who would be available to mentor students as well. Um, ideally, who would be performing the, these interventions um, for students identified within the school? Is there, and is there a special training that the staff need to complete before using this type of intervention? Yes, yeah, so there, there's a, a training, a Check and Connect training that um, identifies the interventions, and there's actually a manual. There's a manual for implementing Check and Connect with Fidelity, which lists out all of the interventions um, that someone may use. And there, there are the interventions are, are broken down into academic, um, behavioral, and cognitive. And so um, when and so you'll see where if a kid is flagging risk with attendance. Um, you'll identify if it's an academic issue, if it's a behavioral issue, or if it's a cognitive issue. And then there's a list of interventions that you um, can actually choose from to help work with the student through um, whichever area they're struggling with that, that is contributed by attendance. And there is a training that mentors go through in order to learn how to implement those interventions. That's great. Um, I think that's helpful. The, uh, um, I have a, I'm going to take a list a couple more of these questions and then wrap this up today. Um, those uh, are, um, do you guys have experience with school attendance contracts and how effective have you found them to be? Is that a question for students having a contract? That is my guess. So yes, that, that is one of the intervention strategies that we use with kids. Um, for our students, those tend to have an incentive tied to them. Um, and so they will, we'll, we will sit down with this. If, if attendance is where they're flagging risk, then we will sit down with them and they will develop a contract um, that says, you know, I like the, the one student that we, I mentioned before, um, he had, he, he was missing at least three days a week. Um, his goal was that he would miss no day, zero days, and so he had a written contract, um, and then tied to that was an incentive at the end of meeting that contract. Um, we've also done contracts with students where they will identify who is going to hold them accountable. Um, so it may be a school counselor or a caregiver um, or a teacher that they're checking in with and, and checking off that they have shown up. Um, but again, it's, it's, there's typically an incentive tied to it for the students that we work with. And do you have an incentive examples? A contract, an example of a contract that we could share? No, no an, uh, of, of incentives that you guys provide. Oh, yes. We, um, Oh wow, we we have we we have students um, who one student I can think of who um, was building a, a art portfolio, so collecting brush paint brushes and paints and and so forth. So every time that student met a goal, they got something that went into their art bucket. Um, we've had students who wanted to participate in certain activities, like um, maybe a. a a karate class or a dance class or attend a baseball game um, and so we'll provide tickets or pay for that lesson um, for them to participate. Um, things like baseball hats and and um, yeah they, they kind of, they really come up with their own thing and we and we also we well, we also have those types of resources to share um, because of the structure of our program for youth in foster care. Great. Thank you, Angela, so much today. Um, that was Angela 
Griffin. She's the Associate Director um, of Education Program Services with Treehouse, which works with youth in foster care and primarily in King County. Um, here's some uh, resources um, uh, regarding attendance that we have um, available. There's uh, the GATE website, uh, um, attendanceworks.com, which is a national um, organization in, with a goal of increasing student attendance. Um, every Student Every Day, which is the, the national um, initiative with Department of Ed and other, other national level departments. Um, I think uh, we learned a lot of great things. Um, we, uh, that bringing up that indicator that the Treehouse uses and we as a state and the nation are looking at is um, chronic absences, which is 10% or more um, student absences um, and flagging, flagging students that are at risk when, the, when they start reaching those levels. Um, I think it's, it's real important to recognize, too, that, that attendance is, is an indicator that, that students are at risk. And, you know, doing that deeper dive of finding what, what's the barrier to that student's attendance is the, is the big goal and finding, finding solutions and ways to mitigate those barriers um, that are non-punitive is going to be really helpful. Um, and, and using that, addressing that data recently, you know, attendance data is not useful at the end of the year <coughs> if, if you're trying to increase, increase a student success. You know, it's got to be much more regular. Um, you got to respond to when, when they're starting to flag issues, you got to be able to respond to it quickly. Um, or, you know, at the end of the year, it's, it's a little too late. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Next month, we have um, Jake uh, from Kelso School District, who was not able to um, present last month. He, we got him on board to present. Um, he works in elementary schools in Kelso School District, and he'll be presenting attendance, how they're increasing attendance and focusing on um, attendance in Kelso. So looking forward to that. And then in December, we'll be focusing on um, in, um, what our data looks like for dropout codes in Washington. So a little shift from attendance to um, how, we can, how we can improve our data and improve our, our ways that we respond to kids um, when, they're, when they're dropping out. Um, anybody has any questions, they free free to email me or Dixie. Um, happy to talk to you. I will send out an email at the end of, um, or sometime next week when I get the video of this presentation online and I will provide the uh, presentation materials as well. I um, hope everybody had a good day and thank you.